The City of Ohio State podcast takes a deep dive into the support services that keep OSU's Columbus campus running 24-7. Hear from industry experts in facilities, construction, real estate, public safety, transportation, and more. The City of Ohio State podcast is brought to you by the Office of Administration and Planning. Go Bucks! Hello and welcome to the City of Ohio State podcast. I'm your host, Dan Hedman. Last month, we took a look at campus planning. For episode four, we'll turn our attention to sustainability with a focus on zero waste and composting efforts underway here at Ohio State. Our guest is Mary Lechieski, zero waste manager here at Ohio State University. Mary, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Dan. Of course. I know Ohio State has aggressive sustainability goals across four key areas, including resource stewardship. In your role working with facilities operations and development, these operational goals have your fingerprints all over them, as well as many of your hardworking colleagues. One such goal is to become a zero waste campus by 2025. Can you explain to our listeners how zero waste is defined and what steps Ohio State is taking to move the needle? Sure, absolutely. So um, the zero waste goal is to divert 90% of waste away from landfills by recycling, composting, reuse, and waste prevention. Um, The driving metric that we utilize is called diversion rate. And so what we do is we go through um, an extensive annual reporting process where we try to capture all the different waste streams that um, are going out of the Ohio State. So um, on average, we generate 20 tons of material. And Ohio State is one of the largest single generators of waste in central Ohio. So you can imagine what an extensive process this is. Um, So the goal is to hit that 90% diversion rate. We know that's really an ambitious moonshot goal. And when we started this um, initiative in in 2015, our diversion rate was at 29.2. Since then, we've made a 20.9% increase um, in our diversion rate. So we're almost at a 36% for FY21. That's great. And I know that there are certain pockets of campus or even events uh, where zero waste has been achieved. So the zero waste stadium program, for instance, has received recognition for many years Ohio State football games often achieve zero waste using recyclable or compostable materials. From your perspective, can you describe everything that goes into making an event with nearly 100,000 people, those rabid Buckeye fans? How do you make an event like that zero waste? Yeah, it is a huge undertaking. So Ohio Stadium was the first location where we really attempted to translate our zero waste goal into a reality. So Over a decade ago, um, facilities and athletics got together and and thought through the process of how we can make Ohio Stadium a leader um, within um, collegiate athletics. So um, we really, you first have to look upstream. So you look at what you purchase and how you can, um, all the things that the fans will touch, whether it's a cup or if it's a nacho tray, how it can be either recyclable or compostable. Um, and then you also look downstream. So then you look at the avenues where those um, where those materials are going to end up and how you can, um, rather than have a take make waste model where you can actually um, get more value out of them. And so it can either go into compost, which would, be, which would then turn it into a soil amendment um, or recycling where that uh, material like a cup would, like a plastic cup would become um, the raw materials for another within the manufacturing process for another product that would um, that we would then hopefully buy on Ohio State campus. And I know you have uh, volunteers from schools that are standing at the uh, waste stations, educating people on this goes in the compost, this goes in the trash, this goes in the recycling, and that obviously helps. But diving deeper into this, the work doesn't stop when the game ends, right? So materials are hauled to sorting locations. One major partner is the Ohio Department of Rehabilitations and Corrections. How does this partnership work and why is it so valuable, not just to Ohio State's efforts, but in lifting up and supporting the participants? After the game, most of the post-consumer materials will go to an Ohio Department Rehabilitation Corrections facility. And the current facility that we utilize is in London, Ohio. Um, And the reason why that collaboration is really valuable is because 
um, we see it not only as a way to achieve our sustainability goals, but to provide um, the incarcerated individuals with um, uh, minimum wage, with um, training and um, education, as well as an opportunity to then re-enter the workforce once they leave that facility. Um, we, you know, I think one of the benefits of working at Ohio State is that we have um, students who are really engaged in what we do and holding us accountable to um, ethical principles. So probably a couple of years ago, our students came to us and asked us to, to reevaluate that process. They wanted to make sure that it, it met um, different justice principles. And so obviously with a marginalized population that might not have decision-making power that could be taken advantage of, um, we wanted to go through an independent review. So the Task Force on Racism and, Race and Racial Inequalities, which um, was led by Dean Gregoire in the College of Social Work, they performed an independent review. And so it was an extensive year-long process where they interviewed not only students um, and researchers who are experts in the field, but who also, but also the actual incarcerated individuals to understand why this program is so meaningful. And I think what's important about this process is that, you know, it's, I think it's easy coming from a theoretical point of view and being on the outside to, um, to, to think automatically, oh, this, this shouldn't be in a, a relationship that we should have. But when you talk to the people on the ground and they heard how valuable it was, their minds shifted, the researchers, and then they actually provide us, provided us recommendations like, yes, you should continue this collaboration. Um, they gave us some guardrails to put in place to make sure that it met certain standards, like there's um, annual metrics on how many hours of training, how uh, recidivism rate for the people who participate in the program, and then also our sustainability metrics. Um, and then the students, I, to their credit, um, the student leaders within uh, USG, they not only have been, they have been active partners um, within this um, evaluation process. So they actually went to the facility, we took them there and we had a two hour meeting where we got to hear testimonials from the people within the program. Um, and after that USG, uh, not only uh, they actually came out with um, with a resolution in support, support of the program as long as it continued to meet the terms that we set out. So, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I had heard from you the the incarcerated individuals. This is like desired work, right? This is a program people want to be involved with. It leads to certifications and, like you said, um, possible work opportunities outside um, when when their time ends. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. So, you know, it's completely voluntary. You have to meet certain standards. Um, and then you get to participate in the program and they, um, they come away with a compost certification that's actually um, done with, what is it? OSU Extension. Um, that's run by OSU Extension. And then um, there's opportunities for like forklift certification, CDL, which are in our labor market are, are valuable certifications. So it's those, they really can be like a launch pad for um, reintegration. That's great. Well, sticking with composting, you know, obviously that's another way to reduce waste uh, and a campus composting program uh, that you launched uh, or, or have expanded recently is really taking off. I think it's such a cool program, one that my seven-year-old son and I recently began supporting by composting at home. Uh, can you explain how this works and, and where other Buckeyes can get involved? I love hearing that, Dan. Um, I've heard that from a from many faculty and staff that that they bring the compost bucket home and then it's their kids that really embrace it and hold them accountable. Um, yes, but to get to your question, um, we have, so um, just in terms of our waste stream, we know that about 27% of our waste stream is organic material. So that's food scraps that happen in our industrial kitchens or um, animal bedding that's produced in laboratories or um, compostable fibers like napkins or paper towels. And so, um, and the reason why this is important, so organic matter, when it's sent to a landfill, it's, um, it actually creates methane gas, which is 26 more times potent um, than CO2 and contributing to global warming. So we know that we want to keep it out of landfills. And so that really is our goal. Um, so our current state is, um, we have many uh, compost practices in places across campus, but a lot of it is back of house. 
Um, so it's when you go to a dining facility, any traditions dining facility, the dining hall workers there will actually compost all the all that back of house material. So food trim, any materials that return that is returned on tray. But what we've heard from our students and from our community that they want to be a uh, more active participant. So within the dining halls, you can get um, instead of a single use container, you can get a reusable container. So you can bring those back to the dorm. So the goal is that you would empty the, any food scraps that you have and then return the container. And then for our faculty and staff, which is exciting. And I want to give kudos to Molly Kathleen, who is our zero waste coordinator, coordinator who launched this program um, this past spring. So she received a grant from SWICO, which is the Solid Waste um, Authority of Central Ohio, about 10K to pilot faculty and staff drop off. And I think we have really been blown away by the response. So within only a few months, we've had 800 individuals who've signed up. And so they get a bucket, um, they get instructions on where to take their compost, and then they take it home and then they they can use it in their kitchen. And then they actually there's five different drop offs for them across campus, which are located close to the commuter lots where they can take their food scraps. Yeah, that's the program that I've been doing with my son. And, and yeah, it's it's very cool. I think it's a good lesson to teach our, our children and to help the university move closer to its goal. So uh, Rumpke recently announced plans for a new facility and Ohio State is supporting this effort as well. Can you discuss this collaboration uh, briefly and just how Buckeyes and others from Central Ohio will benefit from it? Yeah, so um, really I what I'll say is Ohio State has to be intimately involved with the regional community. You know, we are the size of a mid-sized city, but um, we are located within a larger region. And so we're subject to um, the constraints of that regional infrastructure. So right now there isn't an industrial composting facility that can take out all of our material within Franklin County. So that's why we have to send it to ODRC. Um, and, but for Rumpke, they are currently looking to build um, a new MRF, which would open in FY24. And what is a MRF um, for anybody that's not familiar? Uh, materials recovery facility. So um, it's where your recyclables go um, after the recycling truck picks it up and is sorted out. And then from there, it's sent to um, another manufacturer that will use it as raw materials. And so it's a, it's a really complicated process. So Rumpke is they're investing in a new facility and they're hoping it's going to be the most technologically advanced MRF in the country. So I, so that is really exciting. And what that will mean for Ohio State is hopefully that we can expand the materials that we can recover um, from our campus. Um, in back in February, the Sustainability Institute and Josh Knights led this effort. Um, created a collaboration between uh, Ohio State and Rumpke to uh, support and advance circular economy research, teaching and practices. And so Rumpke actually um, gifted us a million dollars from that company and um, 50,000, uh, We an FOD will receive $50,000 over the next five years, which will be invested to improve our recycling infrastructure and services across campus. That's great. There's so much happening uh, on the subject. I could talk to you for probably all day. We wouldn't touch on it at all, but I'm going to hold you to 60 seconds on this next one as we wrap up. So waste characterization is the process of auditing what's being thrown away and determining how to improve more or less. That's my definition anyway. I know your shop's done this and, and come away with some interesting findings that are leading to operational changes in some restrooms around campus. What did you learn? And in about 45 to 60 seconds, kind of where are we headed with that? Yep. So what we have learned that um, is that in terms of our, our operations on campus and what we buy, paper towels um, contribute to about 9% of our total landfill waste. So that's a material that you go to a restroom, you use for five seconds, and then it's automatically thrown away. Um, and so what we've done is we've implemented the use of high uh, of, of hand dryers throughout the um, restrooms that are appropriate. So that the hand dryers are equipped with HEPA filters. They meet all the CDC hand hygiene protocols and they're going to help us meet our zero waste goal. So that's almost 10% of waste just by making this one change in bathrooms. That's exactly right. And it's something that most people don't think about. We've gotten yeah. like some pushback from camp, some, a couple of vocal community members, but honestly, like, especially our students, most people just are going about their day and don't notice the change. 
Very nice. Well, Mary, we appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today and all the work taking place in facilities, operations, and development to move Ohio State closer to its sustainability goals. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate the time. The City of Ohio State podcast is brought to you by the Office of Administration and Planning. On our next episode, we'll check in with Ohio State's police chief, Kimberly Spears McNatt, to hear what Ohio State is doing to keep students safe when they return to campus this fall. Until next time, be kind and go Bucks.